Euler's method with a spreadsheet. So in this screencast I'm going to talk about how to use Euler's method to solve a differential equation and um, I'm also going to talk about how to ensure that your accuracy is of a sufficiently high precision. Of course we're going to be dealing with an equation for which we can calculate the exact answer which is not always the case when one uses Euler's method. In fact it rarely is because if you had an exact solution you wouldn't bother finding one numerically most of the time. Uh, so we have the added bonus that we can actually use the exact uh, solution to determine if our approximate solution is accurate enough. Although in real applications this won't really make sense, it's a good way to illustrate how the error in Euler's method improves as you decrease the size of your time step. So let's switch over to Excel and what you see here is my prepared spreadsheet where I've included first here you see the differential equation that we're solving which is Newton's law of cooling which says that the rate of change of the temperature is proportional to the difference between the environmental temperature and the temperature of the object that is cooling or heating and here I've written in a value of 20 for the environmental temperature an initial temperature for my coffee cup of 95 degrees the K value is 0.029, and I'm going to start with a DT value of 6. So what you can see below here, I have an entire column of T values that I calculate simply by specifying 0 at the beginning and then adding a DT value. And recall that we use the dollar sign notation to indicate that we want to always refer to the same DT. We don't want it to change as we copy this column all the way down. You'll notice, even though we're going to be interested in the, the value of the temperature at 60 minutes, which is right here, I've gone well beyond that, and that's because as I change my t dt value to smaller and smaller values, I'll need more cells to get to 60. And so I've just copied them in advance, and I'll just hunt for the 60 row when I need them. Okay, so that is the t time variable, and now what about the t temperature, the capital T value? Well, we start at 95, so I just include a reference to my initial condition there. And then on the next row, I enter the formula for Euler's method, which tells me that I should take my previous value of t and add to it dt multiplied by the right-hand side of the equation, which in this case is k times the difference between e and t, where t here is the previous value of t in the row above. And then I copy that all the way down so that I can get all the way up to 60. And then what we're interested in is getting a relative error of less than 1%. So I need, in order to calculate my relative error, I need the actual temperature. So in this cell here, I've added in the formula from a real solution of Euler's, uh, sorry, a real solution of Newton's law and I get that the temperature ought to be, the, the one I'm trying to calculate numerically, ought to give me 33.164. And now obviously because we're doing this numerically, we're approximating derivatives with finite differences, so we're not going to get exactly that value. So what is it going to be for dt equals 6? Well, we go down to the 60 row and we see the value here is 31.0882. So I'm going to copy that, control C, and paste it up here, but I'm going to use this paste special so that as I change the spreadsheet, the number here does not change. So to do paste special, I do control command V. At least that's what it is on my Mac keyboard. On your machine, uh, you either figure out what that is or you use the menus. But you want to do a paste special and choose values instead of having the formula up here. And now you can see that this is actually entered as a number up here in the spreadsheet rather than as a reference to cell B16. So that's our approximate answer and you can see there's a difference of about 2 which is certainly not going to be 1% error. So how do we calculate our relative error? The relative error will be the difference between these two divided by the actual and now if I'm going to be copying this later to other cells down here, I want the actual to be locked down in place. So I'll put the dollar signs in front appropriately. Now 
let's see here. So, whoops. So, uh, so sometimes you may see the relative error defined as actual minus error, or maybe it's sorry, actual minus approximate, or approximate minus actual. We're going to be just looking at the number. So if it's a positive or negative value, we're not going to be so concerned. What we're interested in seeing is that is this smaller than 0.01, which here it's not. It's a 6% error, so we have to keep going. So then I change my value here. And if you're on Excel, beware of this problem. If you just divide by 2, there's no equal sign in front. So Excel assumes that this is a date, either January sorry, February 6th or June 2nd, June 2nd, yeah. So to overcome Excel's cleverness, we go up to the format area here and we change that back to number. But I recommend putting in an equal sign at six over two and then it automatically knows it's a formula. So now we have a new set of numbers here. I zip down to row 26, which is where my 60 value is. So I go to time 60 and I do a copy and then back up here and a special paste value. And I can copy over my formula for relative error without having to be careful with the formula now because I put my dollar signs in and now I'm down to a 3% error. So we keep doing this and I have four of them set up here to fill in. I may need fewer than that because I'm already at six and then I go to three. Hopefully I'll be able to get there before the sixth refinement, but maybe I'll have to go beyond. But I will leave it to you to figure that out. And that is how we solve a differential equation using Euler's method and determine the accuracy when we have an actual solution.